lady of the night. <laughs> <laughs> the Reverend Dr. LaVon Shaw, a.k.a. The Erogenous Coach. Woo! What's up, what's up? It's Friday night, just got paid. Hey, it's Friday night. Hey, everybody. Love it you guys. Yes, it is Friday night, and we are in the building. And this is Mother's Day weekend, so happy Mother's Day. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Oh, thank you, thank thank you. All these mothers. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Topic: We're going to talk about motherhood because we're focusing on motherhood this month, and we're going to talk about balancing motherhood and remaining sexy and sexual with all the demands of life. All right, all right. Motherhood and being sexy at the oh, same. Yeah. How do we do it? How do we balance this thing out? It's definitely possible. And let me say this, is that it's all about priorities, that we can't forget where our place is within a relationship. You can be a mom and be a mom to your kids, but you have a husband. You can be the wife to that husband. It's all about how you section that pie. You don't want to take the pie and just do like this and everything is scrambled together. You want to keep those sections each to their own. You give yourself to your children, but you give yourself to your man. Your man gives himself to his wife. He gives himself to his children. So it's all about making sure you keep that pie sectioned properly is what I think can definitely help as far as uh, what it is. Because when we start, when we first date a woman, hey, you know, that's the best time. Is when, when, when you first get to know a woman, you're getting to know a woman and things like that. And you don't ever want to lose that. So even though you may be together for a long time, you always want to remember what it was in the beginning. And you don't want to let you just let yourself go because I know what happens. You get into your lifestyle and, you know, we we. Truth is, we get lazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. We stop taking care of ourselves. We stop thinking about how we dress. It's easier just to throw on some sweatpants and a t-shirt and just go on and do what you're going to do. It's comfortable. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> you, know, so you, right. Have to, you have to just kind of remember that, you know, I'm still in a game. I'm still in a process. I'm still in a place. And I want her to always think about me as being sexy because I don't want her to lose her eye for me. You know, I always wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. I always <laughs> wanted to be there. I felt that one. Always wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. Me too. Woo! Me too. All right. All right. And uh, uh, the erogenous coach, <laughs> Dr. LaVarge. <laughs> I mean, this is this is your this is your night. <laughs> what do you think? What do you What do you feel? What do you think? What you feeling right now? <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you. I hear you, Kevin, and I love it. And uh, first, let me say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are listening, yes. even the aunties and the sisters who don't have their own children, but you've been in mom's place. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a shout out to my mom. My mom will be 87 on the 18th, still walking 10 miles every day. Y'all see my mother. You would not believe oh. my mom. What? That's <laughs> wow. That's wow. Wow. Um, that is beautiful. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. oh, my amazing. Mom. Amazing woman. So let me say this. Um, yeah, Kevin's right. We we do, especially during the pandemic, you know, we we dropped our heels, you know, we went, we went and got our own gray sweats, right? <laughs> yes, yes, we did. And then some of us went all natural and stuff, but Hello. we do have to remember, we do have to remind ourselves of our femininity because sometimes we as we're changing hats from being mom to being ourselves, just reminding us that we are a girl, let alone his girl or his wife, you know? So now I'll tell you a little secret. Even though I was my husband's wife, he would always like, you my girl, you my girl. So I still felt like, oh, we still dating. We still dating. Mm -hmm. So we used to have marathon dates. So marathon dates, we would give it to the kids Friday, Saturday, Sunday, make sure that everybody had something to do. And we would date, just go out and do whatever, drive around. Mm -hmm. But you need to know who you are. And you need to remember, yes, you are a mom, but 
you are a girl and you got to remember how to wear your femininity. And yes, you can still be femininity in your sweats and some cute little tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, they they be dazzled the shoes now. So you got you can still do all that stuff and be comfortable. But every now and then, every now and then, go and put your little squeeze them dress, hold them in tight dress on and Have your freak them dress. Don't no. play your freak them dress. No. <laughs> <laughs> I my children, I wasn't always a reverend, honey. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and let them see. You don't have to go out because of the pandemic, but you could just walk around and just say, mm, you know. Mm -hmm. And even you could do a little peekaboo. You can have some lace boxer shorts under there. Like, <laughs> see what I got? <laughs> hey, yes, yeah, Kevin, they come in lace. Oh, yeah. Oh, boxer yeah. shorts come in lace if you know where to look. Victoria doesn't always have a secret. Uh-oh. 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 Ah! Yes. I love it. I love it. And I, I do. I do, I think it's very important. Um, Kevin, I agree that, that we um, remain to have some type of sexiness, you know, um, with ourselves, you know, with our mates, because it's, it's, it is important. It is because you don't. Because I've always said that this is me personally, that I would always remain a certain weight. It didn't matter how many kids I had or anything that I would always because I always wanted to be appealing, you know, to my man. That was just always been a thing for me. I never want to be um, that woman who sometimes we do. We get very comfortable. Some, like we'll we'll go. And honestly, let's be honest. We'll go through the, the whole dating phase. We'll get him. I got him, you know, and then just. It just everything just falls falls off you know we we're even us we're women we're not even trying to continue to date either you know we're not trying to continue to date and keep that going we both have to do with the male and the female we both have to continue to date each other he can't just be trying to date us we need to continue to date each other and, and make sure that we i feel like no look look a certain way as often as as often as you can you know because it is a lot it's a lot being a parent yeah um you know and trying to do the every day and having to go to work and even if you're at home mom that's a 20 that's like a 24 hour job people think if you're, you're at home that you're just sitting around doing nothing no you are the um what are all these names you're the you're the you're the, the engineer you know, the chef right you're, right. you're, you're the, the therapist the right <laughs> you're the doctor right you're the nurse mm -hmm. like you play you have to wear all those hats and you don't even really get a break you don't so being a at home mom to me it's it's more demanding than actually yeah. having to um, get up and uh, you know go to work and to do that work and, and, and your your daily routine changes. You don't have at least at work. It's like your base. Sometimes you have you know what you got to do each day. Being home, you don't know what you're gonna have to do this day to day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but I do I do think you know something, something to happen right to yeah. you from your task. Exactly, exactly. And I do I do think you know being sex it can it's it can be a lot. When you start involved, when children are involved, I think it it um it, it it can be a lot, and that's just keeping it real. It's a lot, yeah. Bring and children into the uh the situation, but I do think it's important to have a level, some type of level of sexiness, and just just for me, just for my own, for my own personal, you know, with Levine talk about you got to know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to even just want to be nice and keep yourself and be nice and go for your own self, not just for your mate, but for you. What were you going to say, Kevin? I was going to say that we as men can help in that because we have to learn how to moderate our level of um, how we're viewing sexiness. You know, when, when we're young and we, you know, we're 21 and man, everything looks good. And, you know, today is, a, you know, I like tall women. Tomorrow, ooh, it's so like short women. Tomorrow's like, a, oh, I like red bone. You know, mm. we have this 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 uh, fluctuating passion that, you know, when we're young. Mm -hmm. But as we get older, we have to realize and begin to mature in our emotional state and realize that situations change. Women get older. They do have children their body begins to change. Now, certainly she can do things to help herself be sexy, but 
in his mind, he has to be meet that maturity, that 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 level of maturity where he begins to say, you know, we're aging. Can I see my wife the same way as she gets older and her body changes? Because the thing about it is if you're just looking at her body, but you're not seeing that 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 woman inside that you fell in love with, that's where you're going to start to have a wandering eye. Because, yeah, you know, I love her, but, you know, she done got too heavy and she got too this. And, you know, you're looking around at all these other women. We have to understand as men that you have to turn your heart toward the one you're with. And you have to understand how you go about turning your heart toward the one you're with. And she can help in ways where, you know, like you said, that she doesn't just let herself go. But at the same time, you have to begin to uh, not make everything about sex. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be sexy. It's okay to have affection. You know, when it comes to affection, you realize affection can go a long way. If you're not an affectionate man, all you think about is going to be sex. I just got to get this all. I got to do this. I got to do this. Mm -hmm. But learn to be affectionate. Learn how to please your woman in other ways that don't necessarily require penetration with a woman. Right. You know, there's other ways that you can satisfy her. There's other ways you can make her happy. And let me tell you something. If you got a, a woman that has that joy in her heart for you, you're going to be a happy man, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's, look, that's the key. She's going she's gonna to remain sexy and want to be sexy for you if she's happy, if she's happy in the relationship, right? Go ahead. Right. Uh, that's um, what you have to learn to do, to learn how do I make her heart happy? And then, you know, your that the body is the easy part. But how do I make her heart happy? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're right. And, and to learn past, to love past the intimacy, but love through it. But intimacy could be more than just penetration. So you hit the nail on the head, Kevin, with that. So because you can have a Coca-Cola shaped body. But when you take the top off, it might be Sprite. And you got to prepare, be prepared because he can have a, <laughs> a flat Sprite. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. And then he can have a six pack. But after the kids and a few times, a few years of marriage, turn into a keg. But you still love him. <laughs> right. <laughs> you love them because you grow together. Right. As long as you are happy, there are little things if you learn each other's love language, learn mm -hmm. your own, but learn each other's love language. Mm -hmm. Some is just touch. Some are gifts. Some are words of affirmation. But once you learn that your partner's language, you can talk to them. Hey, baby, you okay? I just called a check on you. And you know good and well it's 12 o'clock. They're getting ready to watch this soap operas. And... <laughs> Whatever's going on. And um, I'm not just saying soap operas because you can watch a soap at work for those who are going into the office. Mm -hmm. But just a, just a word of affirmation. I just want to know when I get home, can I get a kiss from you? Just little simple stuff. Exactly. I mean, even silly stuff because you can call and say, do you have on any panties? <laughs> ah, I love it. <laughs> or you can post them a picture of some boxers or 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 thong and say, which one should I be wearing when you get home? Just little little things to keep the energy going, and that doesn't require. Now you can be out the sweats when you get when he, he comes home and have, that <laughs> or it can be reversed because you can say, honey, I want you to wear these briefs when you come home. It, it's vice versa, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah, they had briefing boxes on for the wives to text the husbands. Can you put on the you know the red boxes, the mm -hmm. ones with the little bell in the front, you know? But <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, just definitely. to keep definitely them. those were the things that I used to enjoy because I knew the woman I used to be with. They made they made her happy. But she used to, it used to put her in a, a different kind of mood. It used to be like a, a fun mood, but it was more than just like a happy mood. It used to kind of, I guess it kind of turned her on in a way, but it made her happy because I wanted to make her always feel special in some kind of little way or little way like that. Like I, you know, I say all the time, you know, I used to, you know, buy little gifts and, um, I wouldn't tell her I bought them, but I would go somewhere in her house and I would hide it, knowing that eventually she's going to find it. 
And I would never say, I wouldn't say anything until she found it. But she used to get such a kick out of that. And just seeing how she reacted toward it is, is, is what gave me joy. Because I knew that some way I touched her in a way that she wasn't even expecting. I didn't even have to be there. When she found it, it was like I was there and I did it. But I wasn't there. And that made it even more special because it was almost like my presence was there when she didn't expect it. And little things like that bring so much joy to, um, I think that th th there's such an emphasis on sex, 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 sex. And I mean, sex is fine, but it's, it's, it's where it's, I think the reason why so many people need so much sex is because they don't invest in the other part of a relationship, which I said is affection, how we're affectionate. Because affection can go a long way if you feed it properly. Sometimes she don't need sex. Sometimes she just needs to know that she's wanted. She just needs to know that, man, I am loving. This guy loves me. And you have to let her know that. And you have to show her that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes then the sex is even better when you get to it because it's been building like, man, this guy's really getting my circuits going here. And by the, by the time you get to it, it's a whole different other experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you know, have sex for five days straight and be like, mm, day five, yeah, okay. You may enjoy it, but you want something deeper. And I think that's what most people are looking for. They're looking for a more soulful experience in sex rather than just the physical, you know? And yeah. that's important. Now I know that as for me as a man, that's important to me. Physical uh, release is okay, but can you get it from in here? Can you touch me in here mm -hmm. deep enough that my experience is even greater? And that's what I as a man feel like I may be missing because, you know, just physical is a side, but can you reach me in a different way? to take our sexual experience to a much deeper, more intimate and stronger level. And that's what a lot of times men are looking for and they don't find. That's why they're running all over the place, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, I was just thinking earlier today, I was in the bathroom and I was, <laughs> I was on the commode and I was thinking like, you said the same thing talking about sex, 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 you know? And I'm thinking like a lot of times I was thinking people are bored. Yeah. People are bored, and so that they don't. And sometimes people that's they, that's all they have to offer is sex, and so that's why it's always sex, sex, sex all the time. If you weren't if you weren't bored and maybe doing something, maybe a little bit more constructive with yourself, you wouldn't always be focused on sex so much. Oh yeah, I mean, and I think the word bored is probably the best word you could put on it because people are they have sex. But emotionally, intimately, they're bored. Mm -hmm. Because and what's the difference? That's the key mm -hmm. word, the intimacy, the mm -hmm. intimacy. And you want, they want to be touched like that. And they don't know that. That's what they're really thirsting for. And they're pacifying it with sex, the penetration. But if you sit down and touch and actually look into each other's eyes and try to synchronize your breathing, try to be actually in the moment, turn off your phones, turn off your TV, and just be the two of you all together and just know that, hey, this is, and be aware of what's around you. Say if you do it outside, if you're sitting outside and you can hear the birds chirping, you can hear or see the birds flying over, you can hear the wind going through the leaves and rustling, rustling the trees, you can hear and smell the grass. If you listen closely, you can hear the grass going mm -hmm. and just and I live I live in the country so I can really <laughs> vivid, <laughs> see this so and I go outside a lot just to reconnect to get grounded but if you get grounded together I, I forgot I was reading something and the young lady had the um gentleman sit back to back and just mm -hmm. be aware of what was going on around of the two of them and they're trying to kind of synchronize their breathing together. And 
It lasted almost 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But the gentleman got up saying this was the best date of his life mm -hmm. because it wasn't the tension of what we're going to do next, what we're going to do next, what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. But it was just being in the moment, mm -hmm. just relaxing mm -hmm. and not having to answer this call, answer this email, just be mm -hmm. in the moment. Mm -hmm. And it's, get to know one another again. Yep. You know, if mm -hmm. you end up in the bed, fine. But if you don't, it is great because the goal of, and I'm going to date myself, the goal of courting is to know one another mm -hmm. and find out if you're a good fit for one another. Right. When you're so busy trying to get to the end, <laughs> you miss mm -hmm. a great part in the middle. Right. Yep. Microwave emotions. I always say, that the key to intimacy and the key to sexiness is like we were saying earlier, is subtlety. It's not about microwave emotions where how good am I at doing this or how good am I? It has nothing to do with that. It's about the overall general experience. I'm a man. I want to experience my woman in more ways than just a release. That's fine. There's so much there to, and you were, you used the word earlier, femininity. That's the experience that I'm looking to get. What is it that God put in this woman that draws me to her? What is it that God put in this woman that turns these buttons on and gets things rolling? Mm -hmm. So I want to experience her how she feels, how she reacts when I touch her, where I touch her. You know, I always said, and this was with a woman I was, used to be with, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but <clears throat> I always said to her that sex is better in the dark than it is with the light on because she used to want to have the light on. And that's not where I was because I wasn't feeling it. I said, why? She said, why do you want to have sex in the dark? I said, because you see, in the dark, you're not depending on these. I'm not depending on what I see. I'm depending on my other senses. What you feel. Mm. Here we go. <laughs> you know, it's what you smell. It's what you touch. Mm. It's an unexpected touch and a place you didn't expect because you didn't see it coming. And so much of that really, we depend on our eyes for so much, and I get it. Mm -hmm. And when we depend on our eyes, we're looking to arouse ourselves by what it is we see. But if you don't have your vision, you just have whatever senses you have to listen to or breathe, to smell what you smell, touch what you touch. Mm -hmm. And you do it subtly and you move slow because you can't see what's going on. But it makes the experience so much better because you're not depending on your sight. So you don't need this. You're experiencing her in her mm -hmm. in a blind state. And that's the way you do it. I'm not depending on how good her body looks or what she's wearing mm -hmm. or whatever. I can't see it. Even if you have like low candle lights where, you know, just like one candle can cast just enough light, but just enough darkness to make the experience so much better where I'm not depending on what I see. And that's a grand experience. I got to tell you, mm. it is. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's Brother Kevin. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Kevin is on fire, Marisa. <laughs> she might be watching. I don't know. But woo, Kevin is on fire tonight. He wasn't feeling that well last week, y'all. But baby, he making up for last Yeah, because she got the magic touch. She done got me better. So I'm feeling well. Thank you so ready much. Ready to get in it. So much. So much. I, I love what he I said. I'm going to send that good energy your way. <laughs> <laughs> don't play with me. I'll be for real. <laughs> <laughs> That's that feminine energy. I'm telling y'all, ladies. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You got to know how to use it. That's right. It works. But I was thinking about um, LaVon, Dr. LaVon. You were saying the couple being together and just really being present in the moment. And, and that is so true. We are so busy. We're so busy connected to our phones and our laptops and this and that and the other that I've seen people, you know, um, on dates 
and they like, you know, this, like this on the date, the man sitting, and I'm like, you know, so I get, and I get that part, um, getting to know each other, but you know me, I'm always going back to these things that you're saying, do the breathing and sitting in nature. I'm always going back to, you should be doing that yourself. Right. For you too. You could get grounded by yourself. You right. Sit in it by yourself. Right. That's a great date, which also takes the pressure off of going out to dinner. I mean, you can still go out to dinner and do this yeah. before or after, but right. it's just an attitude to connect. Right. A way to connect. No, and I think that's beautiful, but I was just saying that we should be even learning how to be in ourselves, you know, the man and the woman doing this stuff alone getting to know ourselves doing the grounding and all that stuff the breath work and all that you're talking about i think that would be that's going to create a beautiful relationship when those two come together yeah it's going to be explosive right it can be yeah <laughs> 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 said you touch what you touch you yes you smell what you smell yeah, I love the Kevin. Woo! Yeah, I know, I, I, honey. I thought he's gonna. I was like, uh, he's like write a poem. But what are we doing tonight? What are we? What are we doing? I don't. I don't. I have water. I don't have wine. I have water. <laughs> Look, put my lighter. I was gonna do some snacks, and I didn't know. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was that was. And Kevin too was saying earlier too, like um, when it comes to um women still being sexy and being moms, he was saying a lot of a lot of times. And we were saying we, some of us we do we're doing too much. It doesn't take. We we in our own heads or looking at social media or other people trying to do what everybody else is doing, yep. uh, and we're overdoing it. And our man doesn't even it's not even a requirement. He's not even thinking. He's not even thinking about all this stuff that we're doing trying to be uh, sexy moms. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. again, that goes back to knowing yourself, like, you know, Dr. Levance and knowing your partner. Yeah. Right. Right. That's right. So, but when I do. Go ahead. Yeah. When a man sees a woman with his heart, she don't have to do hardly anything. And that's the difference between seeing her with his eyes and with his heart. And unfortunately, a lot of our young men are not being trained in a way to understand what it is to be in a relationship. Um, it, you know, it's, today it's like just so many young people are just winging it, you know, and, and, and relationships are not even relationships, they're just partnerships. And the importance of learning to turn our heart toward the woman that we're with, it really takes a lot of training to understand what is required in a relationship. If we could just get this so much sex out of the picture and learn just to appreciate a female beyond that part of who she is, then it would make it easier for a lot of our boys to begin to think about something more sustainable with a woman. And um, it's just unfortunate that we're not doing that. But we are, you have to see your woman from here, not from here. Mm -hmm. And it's all right to see her from here, but if you see her from here first, it's going to override this. You'll have this when you're ready to, you know, enjoy yourselves together, but this will last and this will always go to the end. She could be old, gray, wrinkled. And if he sees her from here, he's going to see that 21-year-old woman he's always been seeing. Oh. And that's, and, and that's true. It's true. When a woman has a man's heart like that, forget it. She got him. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Levine, you lit up like a Christmas tree down there when he was talking about too much sex. I think Dr. Levine was like, no, too much sex. Like, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, it depends on the audience because I was, what, what I, why I lit up was because the audience I deal with, they're not having sex. So it mm -hmm. depends on where you are and who you're with. So mm -hmm. that's why I, that's you why said they're not having sex. They're not having sex. Oh, okay, they're having okay. challenges and issues with being intimate. That's why I even started doing what I was doing. So, and then the difference it also is you said boys, where we're trying to deal with men. And that's the difference. 
I had a young lady I was talking to her the other day and she said, this boy won't do this and this boy won't do that. And I said, that's your mistake. You're used to dating boys. You're dating a man now. And it's a difference in how they think and process stuff. Mm -hmm. So that cute little sweet 16 girl that you've been pulling on them young men, that's not going to work for him. He's looking for a woman. So it depends on who and how you're dealing with them. Okay. And, And I do understand that. But this is my my point. So many of these men never stop being boys. When you're right. a young when you're a young man, mm-hmm. and you know you're 14 or 15, and you're sexually active, you are going to be like a kid in a candy store when you're 25 because there's no reversing that because you can't turn around and teach him how to turn his heart toward a woman in a way that goes beyond just what his lust drives him to do. And so many of our young, especially unfortunately in the African-American community, our young boys, man, it's, it's, it's our sexual drive seems to be so uh, it takes precedent over everything. That's why a lot of these men can talk about these women the way they do, because they never build the respect for her that she, well, I'm not going to say deserve because some women don't deserve it, but they don't learn to give a woman the type of respect that a man is supposed to give. Now, you do have, don't get me wrong, there are some men out there who come from two-parent homes who are trained in a way where they see mother and father have a healthy, strong relationship, and they adopt that. But when you don't have that, and you're running out here, and you're 14, 15, 16, 17, and you don't have a a, a healthy home like that, you go out here, you start having sex, you, you, you never build the male maturity when it comes to relationships and how you deal with women. And, you know, I've made my mistakes in life. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I was always taught, and mm-hmm. at least I had that advantage from a good mother who mm-hmm. teaches you, okay, you can't do this for this reason. You can't do that for that reason. And I began to realize that, you know, am I going to be like my father? That's what broke up their marriage. Because here he is, a grown man, supposedly, and can't control himself. Because having it at home wasn't enough. Now I got to have it over here. Now I got to have it over here. And that's what destroyed our family. And I resented that in, in, in me because I know what that broken family did to our family. And I didn't want to be like that. So the words and instruction that I got from my mother and the reality of what my father did is what put me in a place to say, you know what? This is how. I have to be. I have to be this kind of man. And it can't be like that. I can't be running out here sleeping with everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what you teach. That's what you show. I'm going to tell you, I went out with this gentleman. And you never just wonder how or which way it was going to go. We were out and um, he he opened the car door. Is he younger? Excuse me. Is this a younger guy or older guy? Is I was trying to gauge the younger Mm-hmm. And um, I was laughing because he did open the door and we were walking. And as we were walking, I'm walking by the curb. And I didn't do it intentionally. We just It just worked out that way. And then I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, no. He doesn't know that he needs to protect me, that I'm mm-hmm. supposed to be on the inside. And I can get old school on you in a minute. Mm-hmm. So I was laughing. I said, <coughs> immediately in my head, I said, Nah, this is not one for me. And as soon as I said it in my head, he said, Oh, I'm sorry. You're supposed to be on the inside. <laughs> Shifted me, right? And I fell out. I laughing. love it. I I did not say it out loud. I was like, Oh, okay, okay. I see. Yeah. I see. But but think about it, might be some young men that don't know that. We, they we don't being an older woman, we assume because like this is that's one on one. Open the door. You know we're supposed to be on the inside, but th- we they don't know it. So we we're gonna if you're gonna date younger, it's some older ones. I, y'all, <laughs> this, no, that ain't a nice topic. Know. But I'm just saying, if they if, if they don't know, they don't know. And you're gonna have to you're gonna have to teach them. 
If and let me tell you, and and you're, you're right that I think that's a problem too because you know for a long time, you know, a lot of our men are not learning those little subtleties, mm -hmm. those little things, and um, it's unfortunate, huh? Chivalry, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And 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 sometimes you know, I understand that women have to be, go ahead. Sexy. That yeah, sexy. They have to be patient and realize that sometimes they really don't know because a lot of our men really don't know. Right. They don't. Right. And we can't be like, you supposed to know. I blink, I think it's women, Dr. Levon, Kevin, that we kind of need to kind of be more receptive or open to and coming out of that we can go old school but we i don't think we, we should need to be like he's supposed to know because it apparently he don't know if he didn't do it he probably really don't know because mm -hmm. i've gone out with my daughter and mm -hmm. um a gentleman we were together and he got in the car and we were standing there and she <laughs> He said, why would uh -oh. you get the car? And my daughter said, my father opens doors for us. What are you doing? And I was hollering. I was, so he got on <laughs> but also, you know, you have to teach them. And I'm, I'm I'm not in the mood for teaching a man how to be a man for me. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. I understand but that too. I don't, I don't mind showing or teaching other young gentlemen like that come and do the yard work and when I won't I won't mind educating them. But who this dating pool out here now? Help me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's rough. It's rough. It is oh, something wow. else. It is something else, but it is still worth it. It's still worth trying. Yeah. It's still worth going out. I even say this. I was going out today, and I was looking crazy. I had on my sweats, and I had on a big old T-shirt. And I told my brother's going to run um, my one of my daughters to the store, and he was like, "You're not going. You're not going to do nothing." I'm like, "No, I'm. It, it is what it is." <laughs> well, what if your husband out there? I said, "What he see is where he go <laughs> today. He gonna get these." <laughs> so I said, "Okay, so <laughs> when." I went in the bathroom and put on the little thing and just put my hair up a little bit, put on some earrings. And I was like, oh, but it also changed my energy. Yeah. I was like, wow, okay. I shifted my energy, you know. I was like, yes. so you need to do that sometimes just for yourself. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it down a little bit. But first, I want to uh, play Dr. Levon's commercial. We're going to play her oh, commercial. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. we're gonna play, and then we're going to let you, when we come back, we're going to let you tell us how we can find you and, okay. you know, and then give us your last thoughts. And Kevin, you can give your last thoughts and I'll give mine. And sounds good. Sounds like a plan. All, All right. right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Love it. I still play it. I need to get that on so they can also follow me on TikTok now. <laughs> yes, 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 ma'am. <laughs> well, my last few words, I would like to say that um, the title of the magazine, the title that we work for, own it. Own who you are. Be who you are. Live your dream and dream big. And last but not least, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And I love my cohorts here on this <laughs> program. Yes, we love you too. Love you too. <laughs> yep. Awesome. All right. Um, the one thing that I would want to say to women is less is more. Subtlety is the key to sexiness. You don't need all this injection in your backside. Got listen, you're saying 
that God didn't give you enough? A desperate man will grab any woman if he has nothing else. So obviously all women have something that still can draw a man. You don't have to go through all of this. I mean, it's all right to do yourself up and do your hair and a little makeup maybe if you want to do that. But subtlety, you don't need to do a whole lot to uh, be sexy for your man. And if your man requires you to go through all of this rigmarole to make yourself sexy, that's a man you don't want. Just remember that. Subtlety, that's the key. It doesn't take a whole lot to be sexy. So. All right. And I just would like to say that, you know, just, just get to, get, just get to know moms. It's okay. I understand it's a lot because I'm a mom. So I get it. It's a lot trying to be sexy and trying to be a, a you know, wife and mom and all that kind of stuff and girlfriend or whatever, but it's, you need to do it. That's how I feel. You need to put some time into it. You don't have to do this every day because it, I understand it takes a lot of work, but I think you should just want to care, just care for yourself and just want to look nice for yourself. First of all, mm -hmm. first and foremost, it's all, it's, it's all about you first, you know, and, and like um, Dr. Levine said, she put on some earrings, put on a nice little uh, headband and it changed her whole swag. <laughs> It changed her whole swag, you know? So I think that when you care for yourself and you have a certain expectation of yourself, like, yes, I'm, I'm going to, you know, do my hair nice and put some earrings on today. You look, just take care of yourself first. Then when it comes to, you know, your children and your mate, then it, it, it's going to be automatic. You're going you're gonna to do it anyway because you've been doing it for you, you know? So I'm all, that's me. I'm always about, you know, y'all know I'm a mental health advocate. I'm kind of going a little left, but it's always about self, you know, putting yourself first. It's okay to say no. It's okay to, you know, pamper yourself, loving yourself a little bit. It is. And I know we sacrifice a lot when we have children, uh, Dr. Levon. We know this, but sometimes we sacrifice too much, sacrifice your whole being. And that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You know, you're not supposed to do that. You still, you still exist. You do so very sexy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, we take all compliments. Where my what look where my pocketbook on put that on <laughs> and I'm gonna hold on to that one for this Mother's Day weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. All right, happy Mother's Day to you all. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much. And everyone, to all like all the moms, grandmoms, godmoms, aunties, all of those happy Mother's Day. Have an amazing weekend. And, and, we, and we definitely want to send positive vibes and prayers to all who have lost their moms, you yes. know, their grandmas that are very close to them. I know this could be a, 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 a hard, you know, time mm -hmm. right now. So I just want to make sure we put all the good energy and all the prayers and a good vibes out there for you because we do we do understand um you know what that's what that's like. And just to tell you that we love you. We love you. Oh. Yes. And you're not alone. We're all we all been through something and going through some stuff. Oh, so yeah. we're just here to you know uplift each other, make each other feel good and just know it's gonna be okay. Awesome. All right. All right sound okay. good. All right, well, we're going to end this this uh, this version tonight of Too Hot Before I Say I Do. I want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. Maurice, we miss you. Yes. And uh, yes, and I want to say I love you, Kevin, and I love you, Dr. Levon. And we will see y'all next week. We love I love you, you too, both. Take care. Love you too. All right. Bye-bye.